I think at this point, it's not the fact that Giselle and the cast don't understand colorism. They just don't want to talk about it. Y'all don't know what time it is. I got the black bean neck on. What's going on, you all? I want to talk about this past episode of the reunion of Real Housewives of Potomac. I don't know how I sat through that reunion without a bottle of wine. Like, I just, I don't, like, I don't see how I made it through it. That episode was terrible. Like, that episode was complete garbage. Um, and it wasn't just, like, the drama and stuff and all of the things. It was this mini conversation about colorism that just really left me confused. The best part, honestly, about the conversation about colorism was honestly Andy Cohen, like, gracefully bowing out and saying, hey, I'm a white man. Um, and this is not my area expertise. Like I shouldn't be talking about this. Da da da. The way that statement was crafted, it was really really good. Like I'm not even gonna hold you. It was really really crafted very well. Does not mean that Andy Cohen is absolved from all the other stuff that he's done because he's participated in colorism on the show as well. He is the host of these reunions. The way he talks to the black folks on um, you know certain casts and versus how he talks, talks to the white women. Like, and, and Andy Cohen is a white man. Like, he's going to do colorism, anti-blackness, like, all of those things. Like, he's just going to do that by definition because he is a white man and he holds power in society. Like, I don't care about him being gay. He's still white and he's still a man, period. Candace tried to lead us into a conversation about colorism and pulls out her phone for a Webster dictionary or Merriam-Webster dictionary of colorism. When I tell you, I could have just threw my TV on the ground. I'm not understanding like how y'all knew y'all was getting prepared for this reunion. Y'all like like dressed all up, down. Everybody on the cast looks good, except Giselle's church outfit. I don't like it. But everybody looks good. Makeup is a point. Everything is to the T. And you pull out a, a phone, and I'm not trying to drag Candace, but this is why we need someone who understands colorism and is their expertise on speaking on said subject because Candace pulled out a phone and read the definition of colorism. Like, and people do this all the time. Like they think, oh, I'm just gonna look it up on the internet and just type in and this is gonna give me a definition. A definition of colorism that was more than likely written by a white man or a white person. Like, there are so many articles, so many books, so much research, so many podcasts, YouTube videos, like whole, in it, like whole things that are about colorism, like good written as like papers on colorism. And the best that you have is Miriam Webster. Like, it's just not, it's just not giving, especially when you're dealing with a cast that be gaslighting all the time and acting as if stuff doesn't exist. Giselle's passive aggressive energy, oh my God. If she is not the embodiment of a Christian light-skinned woman who was a um, the church mother or the pastor's wife or what have you, she is the embodiment of that. Like, Giselle is colorist. Candace, I'm so sorry. Like, your cast has been colorist and it's just like, I just wish we could just call a thing a thing and stop pretending, like, stop pretending. Giselle has participated in colorism. Robin's whole thing, uh, that whole thing with Robin and, and Wendy, that was just clear textbook colorism. She was getting on the victim who was dark skinned and calling her aggressive in that matter when she just experienced assault. Like she just got a drink, a drink thrown on her. How is she the aggressive person while you're not holding the light-skinned person accountable? That is colorism. That's what that is. Like I don't understand. Like it'd just be the same thing as if there was if Mia was a white woman and it was a black woman, and you telling the black woman to hold her composure when the white person simply just did that. Like, girl, I don't understand y'all. Y'all don't understand power dynamics because y'all don't want to understand power dynamics because you don't have to understand it because you benefit from it. I wonder where that comes from. I wonder who does that too. White people. I don't want to talk about racism. I don't want we gotta always bring up the race card because it's like they don't have 
have to acknowledge it. They can check out of it. I don't have to acknowledge this stuff exists. And that's the ish, that's the energy that Giselle got gave sitting on the couch. Like they literally said, hey, like Wendy is pouring her heart out saying that she wanted to take care of Mia. And she had every right to do that. But in Wendy's mind, she knew she could not do that. She knew that she would just like, she would just lose stuff as a black woman, but also she will be forever labeled aggressive and fighting all that other stuff. Like, no tomorrow. Like, if they were gonna let her beat up Mia, there would have been some stuff, but it would have been looking, it would have looked bad. Like, it would have been bad. I've seen it before, we've seen it. And honestly, Colorism always rears its head out on all of these shows, to be honest. It did the same thing on Basketball Wives. The same thing on Basketball Wives. The same energy, same situation, same situation. You had this black Nigerian woman, like OG, talk about her experiences, how she was treated, how she was talked about, how they called her ugly, how they talked about her. And let's be honest. The girls on Basketball Wives have not always been giving the looks they're giving. Y'all been able to grow over time with y'all money and y'all wardrobes and stuff and budgets over the years. Some of y'all have looked busted in the past, but the way y'all talked about OG, the way y'all addressed OG as if she was an other, because she is dark skinned. It's the same way Wendy is treated. Like even Giselle sitting there like, sitting there asking, like, I hate folks, but, like, they ask a question, and you can tell by their tone that they don't really care. Like, well, what does that have to do with her skin complexion? What does that have to do? Are you asking the question, or are you talking at me? Are you asking the question because you want an answer? Because we're giving you an answer, and now you're saying, well, I don't care about, like, Wendy. I don't like her. You don't like Wendy because she's a dark-skinned black woman. That's just point blank, period. I don't have to do any more, like, I'm tired of playing around and pussyfooting around. She does not like Wendy because she's dark skinned. Like, that's what Giselle is a clear colorist, and Robin is too. I think Robin, if anything, is a colorist. Like, I think she has benefited, would definitely benefit from colorism. And girl, this whole thing of calling it privilege, oh my God. Candace, the bar is in hell. Like, the bar is so low, oh my God. The bar is low, girl, and I, I it, between you and the, talking about the generational wealth, oh, girl, I'm so tired of hearing y'all black folks talk about generational wealth. Let me tell you something. The way white folks are snatching stuff from black folks, y'all don't understand generational wealth. Like, folks, have, black folks have been building generational wealth for the longest. Like, they've been eradicated in the process. They have lost things. Y'all need to look up and research stuff because y'all don't know what y'all talking about. And it's just, when these conversations rear its head on these shows, y'all just remind us how far removed y'all are from the conversation because you are thanking that light-skinned woman for acknowledging her privilege. What the hell is this? The bar is literally in hell. The bar is in hell right now. Like, like she was about to break down and she, I thank you so much. I thank you so much for acknowledging that you're a light skin. And the way, the way that homegirl Ashley acknowledges colorism, you can tell she acknowledges as a privilege, as, as in being beautiful. Like, oh, I'm more beautiful. Like, that's what, like y'all don't, we're not talking about the inherent, like danger of colorism, like, Black people, dark-skinned black folks going unhoused, untreated, um, in in incarcerated because of colorism. Like, we keep talking about this, this surface level, oh, y'all don't like me, what's the name? Like, black folks are being killed because they're being unalive, because, you, girl, you too, because of colorism. Like, come on, like, we've seen that. Like, how Michael Brown... Um, was treated being dark skinned and fat. He was already a criminal. Like, like how the police like engage in like this, this, these things because of someone being dark skinned. Like how black men are seen, how black women are seen, how black trans women are seen, how black trans folks are seen. Dark skinned people are seen around the globe. Like the structural violence of colorism from. 
white supremacy. Like I just, I just, I'm looking at, I'm looking at this conversation. I'm just like, oh my god. Like the best we can get it is like Ashley. Like oh my gosh. Like Ashley benefits from colorism so bad that she found a white man that was interested in her because Ashley looks almost like a white woman. To be honest, that man was interested in her because she was light skinned. If Ashley was dark skinned, Michael Darby would not be talking to her. He would, she would not been able to do the stuff. Like we'd be almost there. Like almost, Candace was almost there. And honestly, y'all needed a moderator. And let me just get this out the way. Y'all wanted Z Way to do it? Hell no. I loved Z Way. I love her show. Q, give her her thing. She's funny. She's art She has it. But when it comes to these serious conversations, no. Nina Parker, hell no. I've not even seen Nina Parker talk about colorism. Doesn't mean that she doesn't understand it. Doesn't mean that she, especially her being a dark skinned, fat black woman, like a, she, she definitely, you know, she understands the industry and its entertainment, but I've never seen her speak on it, and I can't trust it. Girl, if y'all let Nicki Minaj host a reunion, when what was that, last year or the year before, after all that bull crap, y'all sure in the hell deserved giving us a moderator who knew what they was talking about. Y'all could have really changed the conversation, could have really been some stuff, but it would Y'all had to address stuff. Now, what's funny is, we circle back, Nene accused Bravo of racism. So if we like colorism has even played in who's getting cast on the show, like let's not kid ourselves. Let's not kid ourselves. I bet you right now, who's to go look up? I bet Wendy is probably the the like the the um has the lowest followers out of all of them, probably behind Mia, and that's because Mia is just not entertaining. Like, even Mia, Mia brings absolutely nothing to the table. She brings nothing to the show. We can do without Mia. Like, even Mia was talking, was like, I was tuning her out. But Mia being light-skinned, she can be mediocre as hell, and just because she's light-skinned, she's automatic again. Same thing, Wendy has all these things. Wendy has all these things. She's intelligent, she has these degrees, she's doing all this stuff, da-da-da-da. And like, she ain't like, girl, and she, she got to work twice as hard than Mia do. And that doesn't mean that Wendy is better than Mia. I'm not saying that, but it's just like Wendy has had to work hard even more. Like black women already have to work twice as hard than their white counterparts. But when you talk about like structural stuff, like her being dark skinned, like that's another like thing. That's another, I can't think of the word. What was the intersectionality? Like girl, come on now. Like that's, that's getting to it. So that's why we need someone who literally talks about this and knows what colorism and can identify it because someone needs to tell Giselle, like Giselle being that passive aggressive and asking, but what does that have to do with her skin tone? Candace is being called like aggressive and it sticks to her versus Robin can like do twirl, she can fight somebody with an umbrella, talk about choking folks. It's not being like stuck on Robin the same way. It's not sticking on Robin. It's not sticking on Robin at all. Like it's just not. People still don't see Robin as aggressive. And honestly, Robin is the most aggressive one on the cast. To be honest, she stay always in somebody's face. She's always doing that. But if had it been Wendy, it would have been like it would have been a, it would have been a different thing. It would have been a different thing. Like they don't even see me as aggressive. They think that it's playful. Like they think it's just fun. It's not the same thing. It's not the same thing. Um, like it's just, it's just not the same thing. And then you just got to say, just like passive aggressive. Wendy just got through pouring her heart out about how she felt about this whole Mia situation. And I got everything that Wendy was saying. And then she's like, she's like, I couldn't do that. I had to stand 10 toes down. I couldn't do that. And then Giselle was like, well, you would just kick in with her later on. And I'm like, girl. You can experience harm and still go back like, girl, like you just experienced that whole surgery situation. And look at you like happy and talking now. Doesn't mean that that stuff wasn't traumatic. We can change moods. We can like project. We do it all the time. We have to do it in this world. Like, what are you talking about? Like she could and she had a conversation with Mia and talked to Mia about this. Like that was wrong. Like, I, like that whole thing was completely disgusted. 
The only reason why I even engaged in watching Real Housewives of Potomac was because of the blatant colorism that I have seen with that episode. Because I'm just not watching Real Housewives franchises, period, like that. I'm just really tired of the whole franchise, to be honest. But when it came to this, I was like, this is an important conversation. And it sounds like the same conversation that we was having with Basketball Wives with OG versus Evelyn. Like, you know, now I'm not comparing Giselle to an Evelyn, because I feel like Evelyn is like, Evelyn is the rudest head of her, but Giselle is just on another level, like, of just disgust, and it's just, Giselle, to be honest, you are the most boring person on this cast, and you have a very interesting story that you don't even feel comfortable talking about. Like, the fact that, you know, like, even I agreed with false criticism of Candace making that joke about her dwindling uterus. I thought that was, like, disgusting, to be honest. Uh, like, and you know what? I have made comments in YouTube videos before and reviews and stuff. I can't even remember what, but even those were disgusting. Like, even when I had made comments about when Kenya was telling her story, that was disgusting. That was clearly misogyny, da 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 and I just don't think that was something that Candace needed to say about Giselle because it's a serious topic. But Giselle, like, you had a story that a lot of black women can relate to and you even shared yourself and said that, hey, like, a lot of black women wanted to hear about this. A lot of folks said they appreciated it because it was something they experienced. Like, I know too many black women who have went through the same thing. And this was monumental, but instead of that, like, y'all really... Happy Eddie and like um, Chris uncomfortable situation. It's just like I, I just it's just disgusting. And then when they're trying to ask her about the semantics, she don't want to explain them. And now you got me defending a white man. Oh, girl, on Black History Month, Giselle, come on now, come on now, Giselle, come on, like inactivate the white woman distress, please. I can't, I can't. So shout out to Wendy for being vulnerable in that moment. Shout out to Wendy for like being honest in that moment. And just, I hope rock, and honestly, Giselle can go kick rocks and open toed sandals with her non-dressing ass, the way that she was dismissive about Wendy. Like the, the fact that she was like, well, I don't like her. Like, yeah, you don't like her because she's dark skinned. Like the way that Giselle speaks about Wendy is completely different from it. Like, everybody else can drag Giselle several times, even Karen. Even Karen, and she doesn't get the same stuff. Like it's playful shade almost when we talk about Karen. When it's Wendy, she don't even want to look at her. Because Giselle's a colorist. Now what's hilarious about all of this is it took the Grom Dom to talk about this. It took the Grom Dom Karen Huger to talk about this. Like it took her to talk about colorism. And I was like honestly cringy when she said that, you know, when she's talking about the slaves, in-house, feel. She did break it down for the for, for the very common stuff for them to understand. And they just didn't want to. They just didn't want to. Like, and you can tell they just irritated. Like you can tell Robin just didn't want to talk about it. You can tell Ash was just trying to pretend like she was interested. And Giselle was just like nonchalant about it. The only people who were caring about it was Wendy and Candace. And you know why? Because they are the ones who experience colorism. So they were the ones more into the light skinned folks can completely check out. And when we talk about, you know, like like the violence and stuff, like that's what that is. Like the fact that I don't care about this, I don't have to talk about this because it doesn't affect me. And then the dark skinned folks in the room have to pay attention because they 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 know what it feels like. Just see how look how dismissive all the light skinned folks on their chick on the, on the couch was, and look how the dark skinned folks was just like, yeah, that's how it is. That's how it feels like being a, like dealing with these things and talking about this stuff and folks can just like check out and whenever they want to just like oh girl I don't care about this this ain't got nothing to do with me it was quite disgusting I appreciate Karen was the only one that was out here just articulating it well enough and uh, but I do think y'all did a disservice for y'all not to Candace at least not to have a better definition of understanding and explaining colorism like y'all literally pulled that like it seemed like it was very last minute very last minute but if they were to talk about colorism they will also have to Unpack some of the stuff that Bravo has allowed and the, 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 the how Bravo plays a part in this stuff too Because colorism literally got half of y'all folks on this couch to be honest if we're going to be complete if we're going to really go there But you know 
It is what it is, girl. Those are my thoughts. Um, I, I, I just, uh, I am reviewing Real Housewives of Potomac. The next part of it, I review this part, um, the full reunion on my Patreon. Y'all sign up, and I will be reviewing part three on Patreon as well. But I'm not doing, I can't do reviews on YouTube anymore because I've been a bust the gasket. But, girl, I definitely do it on Patreon where I feel more comfortable. But that's all I got. Tell me what y'all thought about the colorism conversation on Real Housewives of Potomac. What do y'all think about Candace and her lackluster definition? What do y'all think about Karen really breaking it down for the girls to understand? Let me know in the comments, and I'll talk to y'all later. Bye.